all by myself. morning everyone welcome back to the resurrected diesel channel today back at it again on the mile high duramax um i don't really i kind of got a game plan but i don't really uh so we took the yoke off the drive shaft because we're getting a new drive shaft made so we're going to send that out we pulled the transfer case out yet again for the second time as you can see we got some stuff leaking today i know i started up here in the last video got this all uh you know, welded up, but I think we're gonna hold off on that for a minute. Might get to it today. Oh, by the way, I know I told you guys I'm in school. Uh, normally we'd have school for like one more week and then go on like a Christmas break or whatever. Uh, a bunch of people got COVID, supposedly, so uh, school's canceled for the rest of the year, which I'm not so mad about. I don't really care because I got a lot of work to do all around the shop, so. Um, I think we're gonna shift focus here and start building the back out. So I already took the bump stop off and all that stuff and we're gonna start plating this part of the frame i think which we already have everything cut out we'll set our coilover tower you know where we want it in line with everything make sure everything's squared up how we want it and then we'll be able to measure it weld tack it on get our heights and then weld the whole thing so i it should be i think fairly easy it's just a couple plates you know nothing nothing to it i guess but but to do it so anyway so i'm gonna try and get both sides of these drilled and we are bolting these on for the rear um so i'm gonna try and get both of these uh made up and you know welded on and welded shock towers welded on but get the plates bolted to the frame and everything drill the holes all that good stuff finer things and maybe potentially make our drag link bracket and also make a drag or a pan hard bar, whatever you want to call it, so we can set the truck on its own weight. We might be able to actually lift the truck up or whatever because we got to get it out of the shop at some point for paint and body work. So um, hopefully in a couple weeks, like two weeks, three weeks, I know it's Christmas, so after Christmas probably we'll have a drive shaft for this thing. Uh, hopefully have the transfer case back in like three to four weeks so we can get the front drive shaft made and hopefully this thing will be rolling out of here for paint and body work in like... Uh, let's say like a month time frame, which, which is mid-January, which is pretty close to the deadline, then a week or two for powder coat. Get this thing powder coat and then get this thing on its way back to Colorado. So it's really crunch time now. We do have a few other jobs, but we're not really taking any more work for now. So we definitely need to, to get moving on this thing. So we're just gonna start hammering away at it. All right, guys, we have one of the shock towers done for the rear. So we're going to go mock this up, get it bolted to the frame, get it all set up. See how it looks. Hopefully everything's good with it. We should be solid just to put it on there and get this thing all wrapped up. So obviously it needs to be blasted and powder coated and all that stuff, but we're just building right now, so you get to see all the nitty gritty of everything that's going on with the truck. So I do still have the other side in the front to do. Um, we got this one all wrapped up and done. So we're gonna go ahead and get that. We actually have to do this side still, but we'll get the other one on there. We'll start figuring out the back for some sort of cross member for the pan hard bar and maybe get the back done today. Close to done, maybe, I don't know. It'd be nice to see this thing jacked up. Maybe on some wheels or something. Make me feel safe getting these jack stands out of here too, so that'd be cool. But we'll see, we'll see how much work we're gonna put in today. If not, hopefully soon. Uh, the transfer case is out at Kodiak Truck. The yoke for this drive shaft's out at Drivetrain Industries in, I believe, Oklahoma. So we're getting a new drive shaft made, getting the transfer case back, so hopefully when that comes back in the new year, We'll be able to at least have a rear driving truck. We'll still have to work on the front drive shaft, getting that all measured up and everything. It's a lot of work though, 
but we're getting it. Getting it going. Alright guys, so we figured we left off welding these bad boys up. We got a few bolts in there just to hold it on, get everything kind of set in place, you know, kind of measuring out. So what this leaves us with is the ability to now measure our height for our coilover so we can get those ordered. We gotta get the front done obviously to figure out what we're gonna order for that. But now we have both plates on the truck right here and now we are going to continue this up but obviously the frame angles out so we want to get the main structure done get it bolted in kind of get the important stuff done all this is for looks afterwards to finish boxing that off so definitely gonna do that now i'm sure you guys know by the title of the video we are installing a full sound system in the lml duramax so uh kind of been a crazy week been busy so i don't want that to be a super short video if we just left it off on that so we are going to go into installing the full sound system on my lml duramax but let me tell you what this hsp kit is still looking so good even filthy so we have some hertz door speakers we have a pioneer head unit um, I have two Boston Acoustic G3 subs that are already in the truck actually. Um, they are my old ones out of the orange truck. Uh, I set them in there just to make sure the truck's a mess, but I will show you guys those after. We have two, I believe, Hertz amps also. So I need to clean all this stuff out right now. Um, but the box is under there. So I'm gonna go over everything, pulling the door cards off, uh, pulling the head unit out, wiring everything up, getting it all in. Hopefully this thing is bumping by the end of the day. So nothing to it but to do it. We're gonna get started, get all our wires and everything too. So, a lot of stuff to do. Hopefully get this routed all up real quick and uh, yeah, call it a day. So to get to this point, you're gonna pop your fuse cover off, which is just three tabs. There's two Phillips heads and one 10 mil underneath the dash. You're gonna wanna disconnect your trailer brake, anything else you got plugged in. Now there's two, sorry, the light's probably blinding you. There's two seven mils, I believe, or eights right here. You're gonna pull these off. That's gonna take this lower panel off and then you can start pulling the whole dash panel out completely. Make sure you get an install kit for a double dat din too. Also, you don't wanna do that, but we're basically gonna get this whole dash stripped off and then that way we can kinda of get the head unit out and start going from there and get that all wired up, get the power ran. These are the subs, they need to be cleaned custom box that my dad made obviously it's a little nasty but clean that up and we gotta figure out how we're gonna mount the amps too so at this point we have just about everything taken out of this bad boy uh we almost finished up the wiring for the head unit but we had to mount our amps a little bit differently so we got those set up uh we're trying to run the wires right now which we were trying to run them around but now we're planning to run them through the middle across the back here and then up to here because they're just not long enough uh, a little bit wrong on the measuring part, you know, probably my fault. Anywho, uh, we're just running wires and a bunch of stuff now, so trying to get everything all set up. Hopefully have the head unit in here soon and plug and play the rest of it. So trying to do the hard part first, that way when I'm tired and this takes way longer than I want it to, um, we're not here all night messing with the wiring. Uh, it's more so just plugging speakers in and all that stuff, so. Hopefully, get it done pretty quick here soon. So maybe a couple more hours. Uh, it got cold, it's dark, so close the doors and turn the light on. And I'm all alone. All by myself. So after some trials, uh, I don't know if the amps are gonna stay there permanently, but anywho, we ran the wires all under there. And we're working on the door right now, but uh, we got everything ran up there. Our wiring harness that we soldered with the interconnect is all done, put in, and we have power. So, now with everything pretty much ran through the middle and we ran our remote wire down, which is hanging right there, we have to finish running it back to the amps to jump both the amps for power. Still need to run our power and our ground, but uh, basically, I'm working on taking this door off, which uh, you're gonna pop the little plastic tab off of here with a flat blade or a plastic, uh, you know, body tool, like such. Uh, there's two 10 mils holding this on. You're gonna wanna pop this up, take all the clips out of it, it just pops up. Um, you're gonna pop the little cover off back here. There's two more 10 mils. Pop the cover off behind here, one 10 mil. There's a little plastic clip in that one that you pop and it slides up and off. 
So now basically, this door should be just about ready to come off. So I'm gonna use both hands to do it, but we should be able to ready, or should be ready to take this door card off. We're gonna have to undo the latch for this, which is just the, a cable, which you need a pair of needle nose to pull out and pop off. But this thing should be ready. There's clips on it. So now we can start working the clips off. So I'm gonna work it with two hands so we don't break any. But that's kind of the, uh, the gist of it for all the doors. So once we get those all off, I'll show you what we're doing underneath there. So I'm gonna grab some needle nose and get that thing off. So we have installed our Dynamat, wired our speaker in using our new wire that we routed through the door, which that was a pain in the ass. We had to pop both those clips off. There's two tabs on the inside of the door and inside of here that you gotta pop off, but it's in. So we're gonna put this door card back on and continue on with the other four doors. Now, I was supposed to wire the tweeters to that speaker. I didn't know how, and I couldn't fit another wire through the door. Um, so I might have to buy more speaker wire and wire my tweeters in from the back all the way forward. Um, not a big deal, I can live with it for the next day, but pretty much we're gonna keep pushing on and get these all four of these doors done, run the power in the ground, and then we'll be done with the amps and hopefully have music. So after many hours later, we have everything hooked up, fully done, doors done, and this is the moment of the truth. The power's hooked up and everything. So hopefully we don't catch on fire here. Let's see if the amps come on. I don't know if these things have a light or not. Oh yeah, we got them on. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, we got sound. So, we, the subs aren't working right now. I gotta check a few buttons on everything. Uh, it sounds like the front speakers are like 180 out or something, so uh, I do need to just check some of the fine tuning, but at least it's on and it's working, so I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. Well, good God. This thing rattles some brains, and that wasn't even turned up all the way. Uh, playing with the equalizer right now, trying to get everything straightened out. Um, but it's good. I figured out the issue with the front speakers. I had it set to network mode, which is more putting the front speakers as a tweeter, the rear speakers as a mid, and then subs as a sub. Um, so we got that pretty much figured out. Uh, I had to switch back to standard mode, so we have volume. I still need to run the tweeters themselves. I didn't get to it last night. It was about midnight when we wrapped up. But, besides getting copyrighted in this video, I think that's about all I'm gonna do for today. Uh, we will see you guys next week. I am going home, so maybe some at-home vlogs with the Camaro or something. I know I don't even think I ever got that to the channel, so maybe we will uh, we'll talk about it. I know I brought it up before, but maybe not even ever showed it. So, uh, definitely gonna do that. I hope everyone, if you guys are seeing this, you guys have a Merry Christmas. Um, I'm going to take a week off. I haven't stopped since, uh, since I started the business here, so I'm definitely, um, sorry if you guys could not hear me at all, I had my truck running still, but I'm definitely gonna take some time off and relax with my family and everything back home in Rhode Island. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a thumbs up. I know a little bit kind of all over the place, didn't really film too much, but everything is wrapped up. The head unit's in, we're all good. Excuse my fingerprints, but Hertz audio door speakers, Hertz amps, uh, Boston Acoustic G3 2, Two of them, tenant subs, uh, dual voice coil subs, uh, all transparent audio cables, uh, pretty much all good stuff except for a few of the other RCAs and some of the other stuff. But pretty much wrapped up. Like I said, we got to run the tweeters, which are in the pillars over there, down to the um, down to the speaker wires because they have capacitors and all that stuff. So we just got to splice them in, and then that will wrap up 
this whole sound system. So hopefully after that we'll get our voice dialed in. I'm still working on it. It's a little cloudy right now just because we don't have those tweeters in, but it's all right. It's good enough for me. So probably gonna turn the bass down a little bit. It's a little brain rattly. I have a headache already. So all right, enough rambling. Thank you guys. Love you long time. We'll see you later. Next year maybe.